Hey Fizz One Kids, Campbell here. In this video, we're going to talk about visual representations of motion, like motion diagrams and graphing. What a motion diagram is, is a way to visually look at the motion of an object. And what you'll see is that it's a time lapse picture where the pictures are at equal spaces in time. The first picture up here, you can see that the object here, which is the guy on the skateboard, is equally spaced apart. So what that tells you is that this object is moving at constant speed because the distance between each of those frames are the same and the time is the same. If an object is speeding up though, right, it, as you increase in time for that same time interval, the object has moved farther. And so the spaces get farther apart, like in our case of the runner. In a motion diagram, if an object is slowing down, then the object, the spaces are going to get closer together because you're decreasing the amount of distance you cover over that interval of time. So that's a motion diagram. Now, when we do motion diagrams in this class, we're not going to draw fancy pictures of cars or runners or people. We're going to use the particle model, so we're just going to use dots. If we take a look at the particle model for our car that's stopping, you can see that the dots are getting closer together. Each dot represents that object. Or if you are maybe doing jumping off the high dive, as you get closer to the ground, you speed up, get faster, which means that your dots, the dots that represent you diving off that high dive, get farther apart. So slowing down, closer together, speeding up, farther apart. So besides looking at motion diagrams, we're also going to be graphing motion. There are three types of graphs, displacement versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time. In this video, we're only going to talk about the first two. One thing that you need to remember is that graphs of motion are not pictures of motion. And that's going to mess you up sometimes. One of the things that we're going to be doing a lot with graphs is calculating the slope of the graph. So for example, here is a grid and I have drawn a line that starts at the origin and ends up at a position of positive four, positive four. What is the slope of that line? Well, if you remember, slope is rise over run. So it's the change in the y value over the change in the x. Now, of course, I picked easy mental math, right? Change in y is 4, change in x is 4. So our slope is just 1. And it's a positive 1. That's a positive slope because the line is slanted up. Let's take a look at some different types of motion graphs. So here's a motion diagram. And if you look at this motion diagram, what can you say about the motion of the car? Well, if you look every second in time, the car moves 10 meters more, which means it must be moving at constant velocity. So this is constant velocity. If we wanted to calculate the velocity of the car, right, we'd say the change in position, right, 50 minus 0 over the change in time, which is 5 minus 0, right, that would be 10 meters per second. So just change in position over change in time. We can do that because it's constant velocity. Now, what if we plot a position versus time graph? What I want you to do in your packet, I gave you some axes. I want you to plot the position versus time graph for this object. And then I also want you to calculate the slope of that graph and find out does it concur with that 10 meters per second that we calculated. So pause the video, draw and calculate. Well, this is what your graph should look like, all right? At 10 meters, it was at one second. At two seconds, it was at 20 meters. So you should have a constant positive slope. And that means an object is moving with constant positive velocity. Constant positive velocity means your position versus time graph is going to have constant positive slope. Now, if you calculate that, right, if we calculate the slope of our graph, and it doesn't really matter where we calculate the slope, I mean, we could pick uh, this point here and this point here, and we do the rise of 30 over the run of 3. Um, if maybe we just pick this segment and go from 40 minus 30 over the run, which is 4 minus 3, which is 1. Either way, you should end up with the same value, 10 meters per second. 
Now, what would the velocity versus time graph for this scenario look like? So sketch the velocity versus time graph for this. Now, because we have a constant positive slope on our position time graph, versus time graph, and the slope of position versus time graph is velocity, hopefully your velocity graph looked like this. So your velocity versus time graph should be a flat line at 10 meters per second because it was constant. No matter where we took the slope, it was still 10 meters per second. So hopefully your graph looks like this. So when I have a motion diagram with equally spaced intervals, and I'm moving in the positive direction, I'm gonna have a constant positive slope on my position versus time graph, and that's gonna to translate to a flat horizontal line on the velocity versus time graph. What if our object was moving in the negative direction? What would the position versus time graph look like? Well, if our object starts at 30 meters at zero seconds and ends up at negative 30 at six seconds, when we plot our position versus time graph, now we need a negative part of our axes. So if we graph each of our increments, we would see that this is our position versus time graph. We start at our positive 30 at zero seconds and we end at negative 30 at six seconds. Notice again that the slope is constant, but this time it's a constant negative. Why is it a negative slope? Well, if it's moving in the negative direction, remember that means it has negative velocity. It doesn't mean the velocity is changing, right? The slope at each interval in time is still the same. It's a constant slope, which means it's a constant velocity. It's just a constant negative velocity. And we go through and we calculate the slope um, at any time point, or maybe the whole slope, right? This whole part here, right, the rise would be, um, we have negative, not negative 30, yeah, negative 30 minus 30 divided by the total interval is 6. So we have a negative 60 divided by 6 is a negative 10 meters per second. So again, negative velocity doesn't mean it's slowing down, doesn't mean it's changing, it just means it's going in the negative direction. Now, of course, not many objects move at constant velocity, right? You're usually speeding up or slowing down. So let's take a look at that case, a car that's maybe increasing in speed as it travels in the positive direction. So we would say that it has positive velocity. What I want you to do is pause the video and on the axes I put in the packet, draw a graph of this motion. Well, if you draw your graph, it should look like this. So now the points aren't in a straight line anymore. There's a curve. If we draw a smooth curve to connect the points, you can see that here now I don't have a constant slope. Now I have a changing slope. So here's a, an object that's moving with changing positive velocity because I'm moving in the positive direction. So that means my position versus time graph is going to give me a smooth line that has changing positive slope. But what does this mean for velocity? I mean, if velocity would be the slope of the line and the slope is changing, what do I do? Well, if you remember in the first video, we talked about the difference between average velocity and instantaneous velocity. The average velocity, right, is just the final position minus the initial position divided by the time. So in this case, if we did that calculation, you just take 50, divided by five and you get 10 meters per second. But that really doesn't tell me anything about the velocity at any instant in time. Like what if I wanted to know about the velocity at two seconds? Is it 10 meters per second? Heck no. Well, that's where this instantaneous velocity is very important. Anytime we have changing velocity, anytime we have acceleration, we need to look at instantaneous velocity. We actually can use slope still to find the instantaneous velocity, but we do that by drawing a tangent line. So to draw a tangent line, what you wanna do is wherever you're interested, so say I wanted four seconds, I would draw a line that mimics, oops, that mimics the slope at that point. So it's kinda of like I'm taking a line and I'm kinda of sliding it up there so that it matches the slope at that instant of four seconds. So I actually kind of did that with a little triangle here at two seconds. So here at two seconds, see, I'm kind of mimicking that slope. And I take the slope of that 
line that I drew, that tangent line. Now in this case, if we kind of look at, I made, extended this out to four seconds, and if we kind of draw this back, it kind of puts us right around here. I wish I had a straight edge or something that would help. So it's about 24, and uh, where I cross here at about one second, we're gonna say that zero. So my run, sorry, my rise here is the 24 minus zero, and my run is four minus one, which gives me eight meters per second. Does it make sense that at an early point in time, I'm going less than my average velocity if I'm speeding up? Well, it should. And if I wanted to figure out what it is at four, if I do the tangent line here, again, we'll do rise over run. We'll extend that line so we can cross some data points and we'll get a slope of that line. And this time that should be greater than 10 meters per second. When I take an average, that's giving me really the velocity at the midpoint in time. So that, if you look here, if you if we drew a tangent line here at three seconds, you can kind of see, well, that's not a very good tangent line, but it's pretty parallel <laughs> to the line that we drew um, to mimic our average velocity. This, in fact, that line that we use for average velocity is also is actually called the secant line. Ooh, math facts. So, when average velocity is instantaneous, equal to instantaneous velocity, well, either I'm traveling at constant velocity or it's the velocity at the midpoint in time. So what would the velocity graph then look like for this position versus time graph? Well, this is complicated, right? We could, by using a graph, right, we could draw tangent lines to each point, at one second, at two seconds, at three seconds, at four, at five, and calculate the slope. But gosh, that's a lot of work. Well, what else could I do to figure out what the velocity graph looks like? Well, we could use the data from our motion diagram above and calculate the average for each of the intervals. Now, this is important. So if I calculate the average between zero and one seconds, right, we would say two minus zero divided by one, right, so that would be two meters per second. But in fact, that is not the speed or the velocity at one second, because that's an average, that's the speed at the midpoint. So this is actually the speed at 0 0.5 seconds. So if we take a look, sorry, I didn't mean to jump ahead right away. If we take a look at what, if we calculate the midpoint of every interval or the average of each of those intervals and take the midpoint, we will get a graph that, or a data table that looks like this. So between that first second, the average time is 0.5, the average velocity is two. And we can go, like I said, you could go and do this for each of the intervals, but I would generate a table that looks like this. And then I would plot that data on a graph of velocity versus time. And if we do that, it looks just like the one you see here. So at my 0.5 seconds, I was at two, which is right here. At my 1.5, if you look, the average of that was six, which is right, oh, it's not right now, right here. So we can calculate averages, average velocities for each of those intervals, but remember an average is the midpoint. So we have to graph at the midpoint. So one question is, how could I be sure that I did this right? How do I, how do I make sure, because gosh, this is really complicated. Well, one of the things we're gonna learn in the next video is that the area under a velocity versus time graph actually gives us position. So if I calculated this whole area, right? This is a triangle, right? And the area of a triangle is one half base times height. Um, so if I do one half the base, which is five, times the height, which is 20, right? So that'd be 10 times five, which is 50. Notice that's 50 meters. So, woo! Well, like I said, we'll talk more about that later. Now, what would the slope of a velocity versus time graph give us? Hmm. How about acceleration? But we're going to talk about acceleration graphs in our next video. All right, I have a couple questions for you. First of all, here is a graph of position versus time for a basketball player. Which of the following velocity graphs matches the position graph? Well, what does the flat line on a position versus time graph tell us? Well, 
doesn't that mean that the object's not moving, right? Slope is zero, so velocity is zero. So where do I have zero velocity? Well, definitely not that, that's gone. Now, what does this mean? This is a negative slope, which means I have a negative velocity, right? So negative velocity, it's a constant slope, right? So that means I have a negative constant velocity, which is C. So in summary, when I have a constant slope on a position versus time graph, I have constant velocity, which translate to a velocity graph with a flat horizontal line, constant velocity. And that translates to zero acceleration because there's no slope. If I have changing slope on a position versus time graph, that means my velocity is changing because remember that the slope of position versus time graph is velocity. So changing slope, whether it's positive or it's negative, means that I have a slanted line on my velocity versus time graph because my velocity is changing. And if I have a constant slope on my velocity versus time graph, that means I'm going to have a horizontal line constant acceleration because the acceleration is the change in velocity over time, which is the slope. So slope of velocity versus time graph is acceleration. Obviously slope is really important. So we're gonna start off class talking some more about slopes. So write, go to your WSQ form, write me a summary, answer the questions there, and I'll see you in class.